Okay, fifth grade. We are going to grab a pen here. Uh, we're on uh, more with add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators. And basically, what we're going to be doing in here is those two steps we talked about. You're going to skip count, which is list the multiples, also called just listing the multiples. And then step two, you're going to write an equivalent fraction. And that's basically what we have. We did talk about that you may have to, you may have to borrow, and that is, you know, where we rewrite. Whoops, spelling went wrong on that. These pens don't know how to spell. Okay, hold on a second here. So you may have to borrow. And that is where you have to um, cut up one of your pizzas we talked about, okay? All right, let's take a look. Which statement and reasoning is true for finding a common denominator for a one-fourth and one-eighth? We're going to look at the, this looks like a kind of a donkey guy over here, says, can a pair of fractions have more than one common denominator? The answer is yes, absolutely. So let's take a look at that. So we have a four. 4 and 8. So if we if we skip count by 4, we have 4, 8, 12, 16, and so forth. By 8, we have 8, 16, 24. So we already have 8. That's an easy common denominator. But we could also use 16. If we kept going by, by 4, we would get 20. We could also use 24. But you really don't want to do that. You want to use the smallest common denominator you have. The least common denominator is the one you want to use. The smallest one. It's called the least common denominator. Okay, or LCD for short. Okay, so can we use 8? Yeah, we can use 8 because 2 times 4 is 8. Well, let's see. Can we rewrite it? If I have 4... One fourth. Can I rewrite that with the with the denominator of eight? And the answer is of course times two times two. Can I use eight because two times four is eight? I would say yes. So that one works. Okay. This one says. So look, which statement and reasoning is true? So I think the way they have this worded is kind of funny. Hold on, just a second here. So this one is kind of confusing. I would say this is fine. If you pick this one, I can use 8 because 2 times 4 is 8. I can use 12 because 2 times 4 is 8. And 4 plus 8 is 12. No. I can use 16. Remember we talked about 16 was one of the ones that we could use. If you look at our list of multiples over here, we you wouldn't want to use it. But you could. It's a common denominator. It would be fine. Because 4 times 4 is 16 and 2 times 8, and that would be fine. You could say that. Yep. And, of course, we also talked about 24. 24 is another one that's in common. 6 times 4 is 24 and 3 times 8. Can a pair of fractions have more than one common denominator? Yes. But you want to use the least common denominator always. That's the easiest and best one to use. Okay. Let's go down here and take a look. Um, what is 3 and 1 fourths plus... 3 eighths. Well, we can do that one. That's super easy. 3 and 1 fourth plus 3 eighths. So we're going to use our two things. We're going to skip count. And then we're going to write a, an equivalent fraction. So we'll skip count by 4. 4, 8. And we already know 12. Skip count by 8. 8, 16, 24. And we have this in common, the 8. So we're going to do, we skip counted, we found our common denominator, our least common denominator. Now we're going to rewrite our fraction. So we're going to take this 1 fourth, and we are going to change it into a fraction. We're going to write an equivalent fraction, same amount of pizza. So we have, if we want a pizza with 8 slices, we have to double the number of slices, which means we're going to cut them in half. Which means instead of one big slice, we're going to have two smaller slices. 
that now becomes, instead of 3 and 1 fourth, we can write, pick a different color, we can write 3 and 2 eighths, 3 and 2 eighths plus 3 eighths equals 3 and 5 eighths, yay, 3 and 5 eighths, bam, all done, okay, all right, let's do another one. Cato spent one and two-thirds hours painting a fence. Then he spent four-fifths of an hour walking his dog. How much longer did he spend painting than walking? So one and two-thirds painting and four-fifths of an hour walking. How much longer means we are going to compare. We're going to be subtracting. So we are going to be subtracting one and two-thirds and that how much longer language that that should just be something that you've seen you know a bunch whenever you're comparing things you're saying well what's the difference between them and on a number line we're saying you know how far apart are they on the number line basically so one and two-thirds we're gonna find out in four-fifths okay what are we gonna do we are going to skip count find those multiples and write an equivalent fraction. So let's skip count by three. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. Skip count by fives. Five, ten, and you can sort of see fifteen. And and I knew you you sort of get you know you you get the hang of this. You're like, okay, if I'm going to count by threes, I've got to go way out. I'm looking for something that I know is going to be a multiple of five. And that's why, you know, I just kept on going there. A lot of times we just do the first three, but there it is, 15. What's next? Write an equivalent fraction. So here we go. I think I'll do that down here. I'll do two-thirds, and I'll rewrite that one. And I'm going to make that pizza have 15 parts. So that means I have to multiply times five times five. It gives me 10 fifteenths. So instead of one and two thirds, I have one and ten fifteenths. Now I'll take four fifths, four fifths, and I have to rewrite that so it has 15 parts. Five parts to make a whole. I need 15. I'm going to multiply by three. I'm going to have three times the number of pieces. They're going to be a lot smaller. Minus 12 fifteenths. Okay, and this is where I'm just going to pause because now we have to, I have to come back. We've got to do some borrowing. I only have 10 fifteenths here and I've got to borrow to get this. So I will come back and finish this after my next class. So it might look a little weird. Okay, I'm back. You, you might not notice, but I had to let off and then come back. So here is what we've got going on. We've got 1 and 10 fifteenths, but we have to take away 12 fifteenths. So we've kind of drawn those pictures already and showed you the pizza. So really, at this point, the best thing to do is just kind of decompose this. All right. Take that one whole pizza and break it up into 15 fifteenths. Cut that pizza. And of course, we're talking about hours in this problem. But just think of these things as, as, as a pizza with parts. If you want to think of it as an hour with parts, this would be a whole hour broken into 15 parts. Same thing. doesn't matter what the whole is. So, in fact, the better that you get at fractions, then you'll, you'll be able to not think of pizza. You'll just think, okay, that's, we're talking about an hour. I'll break it up into 15 parts. I already have 10 fifteenths. So, all together, all together here, I am going to have, I'm going to kind of rewrite this now in a different color so it doesn't get all mixed up. All together, 10, 15 fifteenths plus 10 fifteenths. So, you can see, um, I have um, 25 fifteenths. So all together I have 25 fifteenths. Do you see that? Putting those two things together. And I'm doing that, of course, because I need to take away 12 fifteenths. And now I can finally subtract. So 25 minus 12. And you can come over and, you know, you can do that work over here, you know. And you'll see that's 3 and 13 fifteenths. So it says, how much longer did she spend, you know, painting than walking? So 
she spent 13 fifteenths of an hour or longer. Because that's what our hole is. We're talking about an hour, okay? Orleans, so this, uh, another person named Orleans chose C as the correct answer. So somebody chose C. How did she get that answer? So that's a good question, actually, because what we can do is look at this right here and say, remember, let's, let's go back to one up here. I don't know if you can see my cursor. Let's go back to this one and 10 fifteenths. Minus 12 fifteenths. So if you look at this, you can kind of see what, what he or she did here, this person, Orleans, is first of all, they said, well, I've got 10 fifteenths and over here is 12. And they just kind of said in their head, and this is what I see students do a lot. They go, oh, I'll, you know what? I'll just think of this as 12 minus 10. So that'll be 2 fifteenths. Because if, if you look at it quickly, your brain just wants to solve it. It doesn't want to say, whoa, that that does not make sense. I got to borrow. You know, that's an extra step your brain has to take. And then you have one hole and they went, come back here and they say, oh, I have one hole over here minus nothing. So there's my one. So what we can say is that Orleans, you know, did not, did not borrow or decompose. You can think of it, you know, borrowing is borrowing is really decomposing. Let me move this out of the way. So they didn't borrow or decompose before they subtracted. Or I'll say before subtracting. And my the writing is really hard for me to do neatly uh, because I can't put it down on the ground. I have to write sort of against like a wall. Okay. Now let's take a look. You're doing a good job here. Number four, number four. Um, do I represent this problem with an addition or subtraction expression? Okay, so this is the thought here that this guy has. A piece of string is 5 and 5 eighths inches long. So I'm going to just kind of circle that. How much should Lena cut off to make it 3 and a half inches long? So that's, this is kind of a, it's an odd way of asking this question. So what we could do is this, you know, just draw a picture of it. In fact, that's what I usually do. They, they, they give us very little space here, but, but you should draw a picture. So let's draw a picture of the string. Okay. So go straight across. Here's our whole string. And the whole thing is five and five eighths inches long. So the question is, how much do you cut off so that you get um, a part? So that's the whole thing. So I'll do like a from there to there. Okay, how much do you cut off and so that you only get a piece that's three and a half inches long? So let's say that I kind of, I don't know if it let me cut. I will, I'll do that with a different color. I just want to go from, I want to, from here to the beginning, I'm going to say I want this to be three and one half. Maybe a little darker. That might be kind of hard to see. Let's go to the screen. So between here and here. And you want a piece that's three and one half inches. So basically what we're saying is this part in red, this part in red here, okay, this part has to be cut off. So what are you going to do, add or subtract? Well, you, you know the whole. It's always holes and parts. That's such a big idea. So important. You know the whole thing is five and five eighths. And there's two parts. So two parts make up that whole. So if you take the whole thing and we subtract out this green part here, that will tell us, whoops, it didn't go green, did it? That's going to tell us how much we need to cut off. Okay? Now, after showing all that, the problem is we don't have any. I don't have space to do the problem, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to erase this. And I would suggest that when you do these problems, that you have an extra piece of paper because you always want to draw pictures of what you do. Okay, always draw pictures. Um, so maybe I will. Let me pause here. What I'm going to do is just take off the red, and I'll try to work in this little space down here. Okay, so let's pick a color and we'll work in. 
So I have 5 and 5 eighths. This is what we decided to do. 5 and 5 eighths. I have to go kind of small. Kind of go small. Minus 3. Whoops. That wasn't too good. Okay, minus 3 and 1 half. Okay. So remember, we, we got to get these denominators the same. But you know what? This 1 half is really a pretty easy one to work with. So 1 half. Okay, there's a lot of ways to write 1 half. Remember, I can write 1 half can be 2 fourths. If I have 6 pieces, it would be 3 sixths. If I have 8 pieces, it would be 4 eighths, right? 4 eighths of a pizza is the same as a half. So I'm going to rename this to 4 eighths. And I'm just going to do that by erasing right here and putting in 4 eighths. So now I have 5 holes minus 3. I have 2. 5 eighths minus 4 eighths. Hey, we don't have to borrow. That's pretty awesome. So that string will have to be 2 and 1 eighth inches long. So the solution is 2 and 1 eighth inches. Okay? Again, take those notes. Take those notes. Take your time. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so we have, I think we're recording, but um, when I came back to finish this recording, the, the camera froze, which happens from time to time. So we're just going to finish it up. Hang in there. Let's take a look at this. this. These are great problems for fractions. Aaron and Ethan had the fractions 2 and 1 third and 1 and 1 half. Look at their work below. This one says, how are the pictures for the two answers? How are the pictures for the two answers alike? Okay. So they're both adding. There's Aaron. And he is changing the denominator to 6. So let's look at that. He says, oh, that 2 and 1 third, that 1 third, I'm going to change to 6 parts. So that's why he did the times 2. And of course, you got to do everything times 2. That comes out to 2 and 2 6. And then over here, he has 1 and 1 half, and he changes that to 6. And you can see, again, this, this time it's 2 times 3 is 6. And of course, this is times 3 as well. So he comes out with, here's Aaron. Aaron has um, 2 and 2 6. Plus 1 and 3 6 equals, adds it all together, 3 and 5 6. Okay, so now let's look at the other one down here. Here's Ethan. Okay, and Ethan does the same thing, except he is changing his, his denominator. He chose 12. So then instead of two, 1 third, instead of 3, I'm sorry, times 2, it's times 4 because he has to get 12 parts. So that's times 4 and that's times 4. Over here, he has one half. He has to get 12 parts. So 2 times 6 gets him 12. Then he has to multiply his numerator. He comes out with 2 fourths, 2 and 4 twelfths, plus 1 and 6 twelfths. And that would be equal to 3 and 10 twelfths. So then what you might say is, whoa, well, what's going on? Why are these two, did, you know, are they both correct? And, it, and down here, it says, well, their answers are both correct. Okay. So they are correct. And, and here's basically what we're going to do is if you take 3 and 5, 6. We're going to look at the, the fraction 5, 6. Um, so first of, all, first of all, let's do this really fast. Let's look at this. If I do, if I if I if I take uh, three and two, and I do my skip counting like we talked about, watch what happens: three, six, nine, twelve. If I if I skip count by two, two, four, six, eight, twelve. We talked about this before, so I have a common denominator that I could use is six, and I could use twelve. But remember, it's always better to do. This lowest one, that's our least common denominator. Because if you use a higher denominator, then you're going to have to, at the end, you'll have to make a, have an extra step. So let's take a look at that. Let's take these two fractions now, 5, 6, because that's what this one is saying, because the 3 is the same. And let's look at 10 twelfths. 
So one thing you could say is I could draw a pizza and show five six. So I could do that. I'll show these parts here. And if you would, I'm going to shade in five of those. One, two, three, four, five. And if I draw that same pizza over here, didn't do as well of a good of a job there. Now I need 12 parts. So if you take a look at this, actually, I'm going to shade in. I'm going to shade in five parts, just like I did over here. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So now I have, now I have this fraction looks looks just like the one on the left. Okay. It's five parts out of out of six. But I need to make 12 parts, so I'm just going to cut it in half. And now I have this one. There's my 10 twelfths and 5 six. And if you look at those pictures, although I should have made them, you know, more closely, if I did a better job of drawing, you could see they're, they're, they're the same size. But you can still tell. It's the same amount. It's the same amount. So these are equivalent. In fact, if you take 5 six, you can change that to a fraction with a denominator of 12 simply by doubling the parts, which is what we did over here, times 2, times 2. More pieces, but smaller pieces. So here's what you have to do, actually, now. Let's, so now we've established these two right here. These are, these are equal. Okay, so these two are the same. So what are you supposed to do? Well, technically, at the end, all fractions should be simplified. So what you should do with this fraction is you should then divide the top and the bottom by the same number, okay, we're going to choose 2, and 10 divided by 2 is 5, 12 divided by 2 is 6. So you're supposed to do that. All fractions should be simplified. And, you, and we'll start to get into more of that, you know, as we, as we solve more problems, that last step. So there it is, fractions. There's a lot of steps, but a lot of it makes sense, okay? A lot of it makes sense. And I hope you're learning about how to find common denominators how to compare, how to add, subtract, borrow, and finally, how to simplify. You did a great job. Thank you for tuning in.